Um, I've owned a lot of bikes in the years that I've been riding. And as you know, if you guys have seen some of the videos on my YouTube channel, um, I actually owned a 2016 Indian Roadmaster in sapphire and blue that I got as a demo model in August of 2016. Um, it had about 800 miles on it when I got it and I rode it for about half a year till about uh, maybe more than that till about February of 2017 when I then changed that model in for a 2017 Roadmaster in Willow Green and Cream. Now on my first bike, the demo model, uh, the bike ran great, it was a little hot. Uh, you know, I had two defective rear shocks. Um, anyone who knows Indians usually goes through the whole deal with the front uh, war bonnet light. The whole deal meaning taking it off the fender, sealing it, cleaning it, etc., etc. Uh, when you know I undercoated my fenders, um, but I had a lot of issues with that bike, and I kind of chalked it up to the fact that maybe, maybe the 2016s were having a little bit of some issues and stuff would be more ironed out with the 2017. So I went with the 2017 model. Uh, I was there as my 2017 was being taken out of the shipping crate. Uh, I saw them assemble it, get it ready for me, rode it home. And immediately on the following day, when I was doing a little bit closer of an inspection on the motorcycle, because I was in a rush the day I picked it up, I started to notice flaws in the paint uh, that were to me unacceptable for that kind of MSRP. And I didn't know really what to do, but kind of go with the flow. Um, I let a couple of things go on the exterior paint job and soon after that within three months i had already set up a warranty claim for the front and rear fender the fenders are a five-piece construction consisting of a crown two skirts and two supporting brackets um, as soon as i got the bike in february i removed the rear fender sealed the war bonnet light sealed all the seams up as best as i could but the bike has been getting ridden every single day uh, at least three times a day as my main commuter. I don't own a car. So conservatively speaking, I was probably riding 340 days out of a year on this motorcycle. And while the transmission and the engine and everything were doing just fine, uh, with the exception of some electrical issues, what was not holding up was the resiliency in the finish. After having the second set of fenders for maybe four or five months, uh, the rear fender once again started to show signs of corrosion. This bike is garage kept in a controlled climate, indoors, underground, at all times. It is not left outside in the weather, except for when I'm riding in the weather. And I do ride in everything, and I had expected it to hold up just a little bit better than that. Uh, after seeing the second set of fenders go so quickly, I immediately put in a claim for a set of third fenders. Um, and while waiting for it, I noticed, thanks to one of my YouTube commenters actually on my walk around video, that I had a leaking uh, gasket in my aft jug that had caused browning and bluing on my heat shield. Uh, you know, I get, get codes thrown here and there on the bike, uh, you know, little things like ABS voltage when I had this small issue where a piece of rubber came out of my tour pack and it just happened to be that piece of rubber that turns the light off in the tour pack and for months and months and months my battery was going towards that light in the pack and every three days when I tried to start my bike it wouldn't start without being jumped uh, I figured that issue out ran me through two batteries um, codes getting thrown every other day on the screen on the ride command uh, had the mechanic look at it, tells me everything's fine. Sometimes I go to start the bike and immediately when I turn it on, I have a uh, high beam switch on, cruise control lights blinking, oil lights blinking, engine light is on, and I have two dashes for my gear selector. Uh, at this point, the bike is pretty much a paperweight. 
until you get that figured out. And I found out by pulling the fuses, the main engine fuse and the VCM or ECM fuse right next to it, you can kind of give the, the computer on the bike a manual reboot or whatever and it, it sorts itself out. And this helped me about two or three times with that issue. Um, I was left stranded twice by my Roadmaster. One day on a very important day, road day, if you're in any sort of motorcycle club, you know exactly what road day is about. It's kind of a mandatory ride and I had to take a different bike that day. I was not too happy about that. And the second time the bike stranded me, I was out in the middle of nowhere in New Jersey and I had to be back and I had no time uh, for nonsense. I was really upset with the bike. I was already having a bad day because I knew I was on my third warranty claim with the paint. And I'm saying to myself, is this a motorcycle that I can ride every single day, multiple times a day? Is this, is this going to hold up? And I went back and forth a lot in my head. I went back and forth weighing my options, the pros, the cons to the Roadmaster. Uh, obviously, I'm riding a touring bike because I ride two up most of the time. I use it to shop. I use it to commute. I use it to do everything. And I, I figured that if I was going to have to go through a warranty claim every three to five months because my fenders are rusting out and other things are going bad. I also had the, uh, the fairing storage latch on the fairing fail uh, several days before I made the decision uh, to trade in my bike. And I couldn't honestly believe how many things were going south on me and the bike was not even uh, one year old yet. Like I said, this was not something that I did on a whim. I sat for weeks and weeks, probably over a month, thinking about if I wanted to ride out these problems. They're not problems for many riders. Most riders who own Indian motorcycles have absolutely no issues. But I guarantee most of those people do not ride in all seasons, in all weather. You know, road salt, everything. Uh, that being considered, if you're riding your Indian motorcycle on a summer, sunny Sunday afternoon in the 70s, your Indian motorcycle is probably going to look great for decades. Uh, if you're riding through the winter, ice storms, rain, hell, high water to get where you have to go because you have to get there, uh, I realized that the Indian was going to look terrible, not only in two years when the warranty was up, but what was it going to look like in five years? How about 10 years? I have a 40-year-old Kawasaki that's been out on the street for almost 40 years, and it doesn't even show half the signs of corrosion that my Indian was, except for a little bit of spotting on the fenders and stuff like that. So I had to make a big decision, um, and I traded in my bike. Now I had a couple of options because I was doing a even trade for something used. I wasn't looking to take a new motorcycle and they let me test ride a few bikes. Uh, they gave me an old electric glide. When I say old, I mean 2009 and it idled like it shaked while idling. Like you couldn't believe I wasn't about that. Um, they gave me a Yamaha Raider to try. Didn't have enough storage. I don't even know why I test rode it. And then they had sitting in the corner a 2012 Honda GL 1800. I had never been a fan of gold wings. My wife hates them. She hates the way they look. She told me on numerous occasions, if you come home on riding on something like that, don't you ever expect me to get on it. But I walked over to the bike and I started to stare at it. And I immediately realized that everything on this motorcycle is composite materials, whatever it is, fiberglass, plastic, and it's bolted to an aluminum frame. There is not any steel whatsoever on the bike except for the chrome-plated engine guards uh, and maybe a few other knickknacks that I can't see. But I realized that this is probably the motorcycle that I should be riding for everyday commuting, all year round riding. Um, I started to look at the features on the bike. I noted that I have a, I will have the option for an electronic adjusting suspension, electronic adjusting headlights, uh, reverse gear, uh, you know, all the same things that I had on the Roadmaster were there, the heated grips, heated seats, navigation, radio, so on and so forth. With the loss of the electronic windshield, which it was not a deal breaker for me, 
Um, the Gull Wing also had increased fuel capacity, a bigger engine. Okay, it's a flat six, boxer style, six cylinder engine. Uh, same CCs, 1,833. Um, but I felt that Honda's been making these bikes for over 40 years. And I'm pretty sure in 20, I don't know, 38, 2048, when the Indian Roadmaster has been in production for several decades, they will have probably ironed out all these imperfections, all these quality assurance issues that they should have been um, ironing out so that the Indian Roadmaster will be a much better bike. Um, but I unfortunately could not continue to make payments as I was towards a motorcycle that was literally falling apart within the first year of using it every single day. Um, so that being said, I gave Indian a chance. And you can't say that I didn't because I not only owned a 2016 model, but then I took a huge financial hit by trading a 16 in for a 17 and then watching that model go down the drain faster than my 2016 model. Now, when I got my replacement fenders on my Indian, you can only imagine how I scrutinized and went over them meticulously with a flashlight, magnifying glass, and I can definitely see the imperfections in the finish. And it honestly gets down to the fact that that fender or those fenders, the front and the rear, are multi-piece fenders. That's not common. Usually they're iron or steel, sorry, they're usually steel st stamped in a one-piece fashion, uh, dipped in a coating for anti-corrosion, painted properly, coated properly. But there were imperfections in these fenders. Some parts of the fenders had nice, solid lines of paint. Some of the parts of the fenders had holes in the paint where I knew in my heart right away that moisture was gonna enter there, things were gonna get in there and sit and start to sour the fender from the seams and I was gonna see that. And being on a cream colored motorcycle, I was able to see the rust stains rolling down from the seams every single time I removed the saddlebags to polish it up. And it was heartbreaking. I loved the color of the bike. It, everything was great about it, except for the finish. It was just not gonna hold up. And I gotta tell you, this 2012 Goldwing is probably the smoothest, best motorcycle I've ever owned in my life. And I knew this within 10 minutes of riding down those back roads in New Jersey trying to find my way back to the expressway to get back to New York City, I knew within those 10 minutes that I probably should have been riding a Goldwing this entire time. And with that being said, I want to give a shout out to Chris Caliente. His YouTube channel has, over the years, helped me see what the Goldwing's potential is, what its uses are. That guy rides hardcore year round all weather nothing stops him he always comments about dudes putting their bikes away when it once it hits the low 60s and and that's just not true biker lifestyle if you live to ride you're going to be riding in all types of weather i have a honda goldwing now and i am not upset one bit about trading my indian motorcycle for it i truly and firmly believe that the reliability and dependability that Honda has gotten through in the last 40 something years will prove that this bike will stand up to everything and start every time, no questions.